Hey guys, we are live. It is not Tuesday at 3, it's a bit later today. Uh, we had our live session at on Tuesday today at 3 on Instagram, but Facebook was giving us a bit of trouble. So after our live session on Instagram, I had to do a few meetings and now I'm back doing the live session on Facebook so that you guys can still uh, do the live session or even see the live session in my stories or on my Facebook page to make sure that you don't miss anything out. We provided so many value, uh, so much value on the live session on Instagram today. Uh, there was 28 uh, viewers asking questions, um, asking things about the entrepreneurial journey, about their business, about their side hustle, and we had a great chat on Instagram. So make sure you join the live session every Tuesday at 3 on Instagram or Facebook uh, to ask your entrepreneurial business or side hustle questions. For today, I had three things that I talked about and it was the main question was what type of business should I start? Where should I start? And what should I have in place before I start? Because I get a lot of questions, Albert, what's the next opportunity? Where's the next gap in the market? What type of business should I start? And um, we're going to talk about that a bit today. Ricardo, thanks for joining in. Uh, so before I start, a little bit of news. We were at Articofia Klein Cariba uh, two weeks ago and last week at Articofia Buffelspoort for the Articofia Jeug Berat, which is all of the grade 11s in the country. And that was awesome. We had such great success and awesome feedback working with the grade 11 students. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, this week we're back in Pretoria and um, hustling and doing what needs to be done. Uh, Pierre, thank you so much for joining in. So let's get started. What type of business should I start? Where should I start? And what should I do to get going? So the first thing I want to talk about is what type of business you should start. So when you're thinking, hey, where's the next, where's the next gap in the market? What's the next thing I should focus on? Then you should start with the business you've already been busy with. And that's a weird answer. When, I, when people ask me, oh, but what business should I start? What's the next business? I tell them you should start with the business you're already busy with. And then they pause for a moment. And they're like, oh, I don't get the answer. So let me explain um, by using an example. For example, my brother loves PC games. Okay, He's a great gamer. He's a great PC player. And uh, he already knows all of the games. He already has a big group of people that plays with him online. He already has a great PC that he built up. He knows where to get the correct PC parts and what type of parts is necessary, necessary for which type of gaming. And he has all of that information. Uh, so what happens is uh, he already has all of those things established. And to start a business, you need knowledge, you need skill, and you need a network, among other things. But the three key things is knowledge, skill, and network. And what happens now? He's already spending time in gaming. He already has the knowledge about the games as well as the PC parts, as well as everything that goes around the industry. He already has the skill to put PCs together, to upgrade PCs, to work with PCs, to play the games, to assist in you know IT type of stuff. And he already has the network. Okay, so the three things. The knowledge, the skill, and he already has the network. Because he knows all of his friends that's currently playing uh, the similar games, that currently has PCs that's being upgraded or needs to be upgraded, or, you know, are upgrading their PCs. So he's in the middle of this industry with the knowledge, with the skill, and with the network. So it's easy for him to start a business around that industry, maybe buying all parts from his friends that's upgrading because he knows them, he knows they're upgrading and then selling these parts to other guys that he knows or wants to upgrade their PCs. He already knows all of the guys playing with him online so he can easily you know, arrange a LAN or a competition or something like that. So there's a lot of opportunities coming from the point that he's already in the industry. So what kind of business should you start? 
the one where you're already involved in, the one where you already spend your time in. What are you already spending your time on? Where do you already have knowledge, skill, and, and a network? You know, where are you already invested in? What type of industry? And that is the best industry to start your business in. Okay, so that's the first thing. So on the live session on Facebook now, we have Ricardo, Pierre, uh, Nicole, and Theo. Thank you for joining in, guys. If you have any business questions or entrepreneurial questions, send them through and we will talk about it live. Um, on Instagram, we had 28 viewers today asking questions and we'll get to those in a minute. So the first thing was um, start the business in the industry we are already busy with, where you already have skill, knowledge, and network. The second thing is start a business where you have curiosity. Okay, um, I learned this concept from Franco Labrand, who had an interview with John Sinai, and they talked about this concept. And the main message that came from it was, uh, "What is your curiosity? Okay, what makes you curious? Because that thing that makes you curious will lead to excitement." And when you have excitement, it will lead to endless energy. Think about it for a while. When in your life uh, recently were you very curious about something? Maybe it was the latest car, maybe a house, uh, getting into property, maybe getting into Forex or Bitcoin or something. Maybe it was the latest phone or the uh, latest handbag or something that you saw that made you curious. And then you start reading up on this. You started YouTubing it. You started looking at all of the different aspects of it. And you got curious about it and started gaining knowledge, right? And that made you excited. If I'm, if I'm on the right track here, guys, send a shop on the live stream. Just comment a shop so that I know I'm on the right path here. So I'm saying that if you have something that makes you curious and you start reading up on it and you start watching stuff from it and then it will lead to excitement if you can relate when have you felt like wow i'm so excited about this thing it's this new car or house or industry or game or you know uh, this new toy or something that you're really excited about and what happens then it leads to endless energy so that's why you stay up late at night watching YouTube videos about it, Googling it, uh, downloading images of it, making it your wallpaper, you know, all of that type of stuff. Um, I've experienced that. You get curious about something, then you get excited, and then you spend hours at night on Property24, private property, looking at the latest properties in the market and what prices and stuff, because that gives you endless energy, okay? And when you have endless energy, you will be able to push through the hard times of your business. You will be able to wake up early in the morning and go to bed late at night with your business. Because let's be honest, guys, business takes a lot of hours, like takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of capital and it takes a lot of resources. So you need endless energy to be able to push through and make your business a success. You need it. Uh, Ricardo, Pierre, Nicole, Theo, Aidan, Henny, DJ, thank you for joining in. If you have any questions, send them through on the live session right now and we will answer it live. So I started this uh, talk with saying that I'll I'm going to talk about three things. The first one was you need to see what type of business should I start? The one you already have knowledge, skill and networking, right? The second thing is uh, before you start your business, find something that makes you curious and start a business around that because that will lead to excitement and then endless energy, okay? Um, that will make sure that you can make your business a success. Uh, Theo is asking, how can you determine the right location for your business? If you wanted to move your business uh, to a more populated location, how would you evaluate this situation? Okay, so... First things first, a lot of businesses work on different ways. Uh, if you have an online business or if you have a service type business, it's not necessarily the location that matters. So you can do it maybe from any type of location. For example, if you're in the designing industry or in the uh, online media industry, you can most probably work from home. 
And then you can rather spend your, your resources on putting up signs and ads in the right location and driving traffic towards your online um, facilities, etc. But if you have a business like Theo, his business is called Artisan's Tools. They sell tools and hardware. So if you're ever in the need of tools and hardware, go check out Theo Grobler. Um, if you have a business that is location-based, for example, you need people to walk into your store and to buy stuff, then location becomes important. Now, there's a few things that you can do. The first thing you can do is get the best location from the start, right? Have a corner location in a populated area. Make sure your location is good from the start. But sometimes that's not possible. The second thing you can do is have pointers towards your location. For example, have you seen driving uh, you know, in the streets and then you've seen this KFC sign that says 500 meters this way? Uh, you can also do that with your business. Say if your business is not located ideally, then you can have these signs that points towards where your business is. And they, sh they shouldn't just be uh, physical signs next to the road. They can also be online signs. Uh, signs on online social media and on websites and stuff, advertising online, um, even advertising in your area with physical, you know, boards and signs and stuff, telling people, directing people to where your business is and showing them that your business is there and that it exists. And then the third point uh, option there is to change your business and your client structure so that you don't need people to actually walk in. Doing more business to business kind of relationships uh, where you get your business from other businesses that is not dependent on where you're located or doing more, uh, you know, long base type business where you can work directly with the orders and make sure that you you don't rely on walk-in customers to keep your business going. That can maybe push some cash flow, but your main income comes from uh, customers that doesn't mind your location, uh, business to business customers or customers that is not reliant on your location, but more on theirs. And maybe you can ship to them or, you know, distribute stuff to them. So guys, that's a bit on how do you determine, determine the location for your business. Theo saying nice thanks pointers. Sounds like a good idea. Awesome Theo. Okay, so I talked about two things. One, you need to uh, start a business where you're knowledgeable, skillful, and have a network. And two, you need to uh, start a business with something that you're curious about because that leads to endless energy. Now, the third point, before you start a business, you first have to start on yourself. Before you start working on your business, you first have to start working on yourself. Okay, you make to you need to make sure that your mind is in the right place and that your focus is in the right place. You need to make sure that you know where your knowledge base lies, where your skill base lies and where your network is. You need to make sure that you know what makes you curious, what gives you excitement and what gives you endless energy. You need to make you make you need to make sure <laughs> that you know yourself first. Before you jump into a business that's not representative of you, uh, that is not connected to you, and that is not uh, 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 you know, a, a part of you, if I can say it like that. Because otherwise, you're not going to be motivated to work in that business. You're not going to have the drive, the endless energy, the passion, and everything it takes to make that business a success. So you need to focus on yourself, make sure you know yourself and work on yourself first before you start working on your business. So firstly, make sure you do a business where you have knowledge based skill set and network. Secondly, make sure you do a business where you are curious about something and where you have excitement and endless energy. And before you do any of those, third point is make sure you know yourself and you know where those type of things lie, where your knowledge is, where your skill set is, where your network is, what makes you curious, what gives you excitement, what gives you energy. Cool, guys. That was my two cents for this week. Uh, on the other live session on Instagram, we also had the question, should I start big or small? And the answer was, um, I believe you should always, always start small. 
when you're starting this business, when you're finding out these things, don't think you should start massive with an office and a lot of employees. Start small. Start a small business. Start generating some sales and income and learn and learn and learn and go for it. Don't feel demotivated if you can't start a big business. Start a small business. Start selling one bicycle. Start baking one cupcake. Start, you know, selling one coffee and start small and learn and gain experience as you go along and make sure it's, it keeps you excited and full of energy. Cool, guys. That's the live session for this week. And make sure to join in every Tuesday at 3 and bring your questions about entrepreneurship, business and um, your side hustle. And we will answer them live on the live session. Cool, guys. Have a great day.